Now, your news that with some scientists at Shamir Medical Center, you have actually reversed aging, not just halted aging or slowed it down, but you have said we have turned back the clock is very, very big news on the world stage. What did you mean? I can try to say what you meant, but what did you mean when you said you've turned back time? What we have is we have started something like 15 years ago, a research program that aims to target aging as a reversible disease. And we are looking at aging as a disease, okay? From our side, it's a disease. Why we define it as a disease? Because if it reduced my quality of life, meaning my cognitive function, my physical capability, my sexual function, then, then it's a disease, okay? Now, once you define it as a disease, you need to tackle it like any other disease, meaning you need to measure it, Okay, and once you can measure it, you can find intervention that can take the measurements backwards. For example, you cannot treat blood pressure unless you measure blood pressure. You have to measure things. So with regard to aging, we have what we call chronological aging. What is chronological aging? This is the time elapsed from the day that we were born until where we are now. Okay, this is chronological aging. Now, this is not relevant. Why it's not relevant? Because we cannot change it now, for now. We cannot change it for now. So we have a new definition. We call it biological aging. So what is biological aging? Biological aging is the sum of two. Physiological aging, the different function of the organs in our body, the brain, the heart, a kidney, sexual function, muscle tone, okay? All of this, this is physiological aging. And we have also genomic aging at the cellular level. What do we mean by that? If you are taking a cell and you put it in the lab, this cell will replicate something like 40 times and then stop. In the lab, classical condition, okay? Why is that? Because there is a genomic clock. The telomere are crucial element in that genomic clock. And once this genomic clock is been shrinking to a certain period of time, then the cells stop to replicate. They stuck. They become age cells that cannot replicate anymore. And these are the cells that are accumulating mutation and become cancer cells. These are the cells that cause inflammation along aging and all of this. Okay? So what we have done in this research program, we have started with the whole organ. And if you will look at our previous publication, we have been able to demonstrate that we can improve cognitive brain functionality, okay? We can induce generation of new blood vessels in the brain, of new neurons in the brain, okay? This is a whole organ. In the last study, we have dived deeper to dig at the cellular level. And for the first time we in humans, we can demonstrate that we can change the DNA, the changes in DNA that happen along the aging. This is used because it's just like landing on the moon. For the first time, we proved that it's feasible in humans, okay? That's a huge, that's a huge. Now, once somebody landed on the moon, then other will start. He will take this spaceship, he will take that spaceship, et cetera, et cetera. But it's feasible, okay? You can land there. So that's what we have demonstrated. And we have plenty along the way because the research program is ongoing. We have now, that haven't been published yet. It will be published in a couple of months how we can improve cardiac function, normal aging, okay? Cardiac function, sexual function, uh, stem cell generation and things like that. So it's an ongoing program. And then once you can measure it, you can treat it. And for that, we are using fluctuation that we generate with oxygen and pressure by hyperbaric oxygen therapy. By increasing the pressure to very high, doing a fast decline and then up and down again, we are, inducing things that happen during hypoxia with hyperoxia, okay? Because the body sends fluctuation. It doesn't sense absolute value. And by that, we are inducing all the regenerative process, even at the cellular level. And this is huge. And this is huge because it, it happens that what we will have is, people don't understand that, but, but the age-related functional decline is the number one threat to our Western society. 
because anytime somebody is reaching a point where he's demented, they are suffering from dementia, from Alzheimer, frailty, okay, it's not that he's going to, to it's not that he's only, the only one that's going down. All the surrounding is going down with it, okay? All the support in it, everything that. So this is the number one threat to our Western society. And we can generate based on this an Alzheimer free community, a dementia free community. We will all go down, but we want to go down with our heads up. That's the main issue. 